and basketball analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. NBA, some college, a little bit of everything. You know what can I say? But it wasn't going to happen here with him. I was okay with it because it wasn't about talent. I didn't. Welcome to the Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Tangway along for the ride. Zoom and pod right here with CLN, CLNS Media Networks. We are driven by FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate. And who doesn't from FanDuel? America's number one sports book. Super Bowl Sunday, all about scoring the best seats on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. All right, so trade deadline coming up. One of the things we had talked about, Bob, is while Brad Stevens is without question, to me, the executive of the year and the things that he's done, we were keeping an eye on what he was going to do to give this team a little bit of a boost. And he came through with Xavier Tillman from Memphis with Lamar Stevens and two second round picks to deal with Tillman. He's 25 years old. He's six, eight strong, versatile defender, six points a game, 4.6 a game, but he's really there to give him some beef on the defensive end and depth in the middle. On the very day that Joe Mazzola was yet again, going public with this declaration that I don't need anything else that I love my guys. I like my team. I don't need any help. I mean, I'm not looking. I'm not going to Brad and begging for anything. All right. He said that just was quoted just yesterday morning. So now I so Brad gives him Xavier Tillman. I am not going to BS anybody. I am no expert on the life and lore of Xavier Tillman, other than I was vaguely aware of his existence on this earth. I yield to my friend, Mr. Goodman. Maybe he has a little background he can shed, other than what I've been hearing all day about the nature of his game. Okay. Um, that's it. I'm 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 going, okay, the only thing I'll have to further say is the big issue with bringing in someone to to uh, augment this core eight, and that's what it is, it's a core eight, is uh, uh, will he fit in and not want to play too much? Is he? Go, it, it, did they vet the personality fully to understand, he understands why he's there, how, uh, what, what his role is, and, 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 you know, they don't want to disturb this chemistry that uh, Coach Mazzola has been lauding. I'm so not worried about that. Uh, Xavier Tillman uh, obviously played for a while at Michigan State. <clears throat> he is a long, um, versatile big that isn't going to give you a ton on the offensive end and doesn't care about that. He just wants to guard. Uh, he'll be a great piece. You know, when we talked about this and getting an insurance policy for, for Al Horford, uh, in case something happens to him or Porzingis. Now, again, if Porzingis goes down, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're in trouble. But if Horford goes down, or right now you want to manage his minutes even more, um, I think Tillman's the perfect guy to be able to do it. Because I think in some ways he does a lot of similar things as Al Horford and has a similar personality to Al Horford. Um, they're, they're about the same size. Uh, Tillman isn't able to step out like Al can do now. I think he's more like Al was, <laughs> you know, eight years ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where he can make some mid-range jumpers. Uh, he he could switch everything. He is a high IQ basketball player who kind of knows who he is and doesn't try to be more than that, doesn't need to score 15 points a game. He's going to come in and play 15 minutes a game. For a team, and he and he's obviously been well coached coming out of, of college, right? Like with yeah. Tom Izzo, right. he's been pushed. <clears throat> he's tough. Like he's all in the winning. I think he's the perfect guy because, like you said, Bob, if you brought in somebody who wanted more, who was thinking like, "Hey, I, no, no, that's not what you're going to be. You're going to be 15 minutes a game mm -hmm. unless something happens to Al Horford or Porzingis." Period. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why I'm, I'm, that's very reassuring because I'm, I, I was not conversant with Xavier Tillman other than he existed. So, you know, that's why we have an expert such as Jeff Goodman with us. So that's and, good. And I also think, Bob, uh, in Brad, we trust because that's where I am. Right yeah. Now. Right. You know, when it, it, Bob raises an excellent point, you always worry about that. But I trust Brad Stevens to make the right call in that regard, Jeff. Well, also, Gary. All Brad Stevens has to do is pick up the phone, 
and he's got a direct line to Tom Izzo to say, hey, Tom, what type of player are we getting here? What type of kid are we getting here? What type of character are we getting here? And Tom's not going to bullshit Brad Stevens. Now, Tom's not going to bullshit a lot of people, (laughs) but he's certainly not going to bullshit Brad Stevens because, again, that's the advantage Brad Stevens has over every other general manager in the NBA. Every other one. He can go back. He can call their college coach. He can call their damn AAU coach if he wants to. (laughs) That is the advantage that Brad Stevens has when he brings in a guy like Xavier Tillman. Has a bad kid ever come out of Michigan State? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, but, uh, here, but here's my point. Of course, of course there has. But to me, and Bob, you can jump on this as well. If you played for Tom Izzo, generally, you're okay with me. I, 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 a song has just popped into my head, okay? And a, and a line from the song is, he's good, bad, but he's not evil. And of course, I'm thinking of Draymond Green. Right. So, I mean, now, yeah, well, so he's, he's, he's I a, love Draymond at Michigan he's State. He's a Spartan, I, folks. Just, just I remember. loved him at Michigan State, I got to say. I did, too. He I couldn't was a little believe different. He, 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 he got progressively, the last few years, he's gotten a little bit harder. To yeah, there's some, so, I'll, I'll tell you what Draymond's suffering from. Celebrity-itis. Yeah, probably true. No, probably it, true. It, it, it's really well, that. He, yeah. I think to play amateur psychologist which is never good but you know (laughs) we've seen enough of it where let's face it if you're winning multiple nba championships the warriors are kind of you know they're like not they're like the beatles you know they become bigger than themselves you know we've seen this happen with players before they forget that hey you're a basketball player you know then they become celebrities then they start producing tv shows and then on and on and on and I think that's what happened to Draymond. I think a lot of it got in his head, and hopefully he straightened it out. But overall, if you tell me, Tom, this guy played for Tom Izzo, you know, Jeff, I'm like, okay. I'm and Izzo good. loved him. Izzo loved Well, there you go. He's okay with me. Because if you can play for Izzo, you can play for anybody. That's the thing is, is again, it's going to be easy playing for Missoula. And, 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 you know, fourth year, he's young, like – he could be a part of this organization for a while going forward because I think he's going to be a perfect piece. Well, he fits who never, in the yeah, who, who's going to be a role guy, knows he's a role guy. Um, played a couple, you know, three years in Michigan State, has played four years in the NBA now, started games for Memphis. Like, he's perfect. I mean, the only thing I would have said if you had said to me, like, <laughs> what's the ideal that, 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 you want for this role, I would have probably picked somebody a few years older and more established. But I think Tillman's perfect for for what they need. You know, he fits right in with the profile. Now they still don't play anybody of consequence under twenty five, and, and they, they they are sufficiently experienced. Let's let's face it. And so, they are thirty nine and twelve. You know, I just looked at that mark this morning, Bob, because on this weekly podcast. We look for things to talk about. And generally, you talk about losing a game to the Lakers, uh, you know, getting blown out by the Gary Clippers. was all, hey, Gary was all up in arms over the loss of the Lakers. Well, I, I got him down off the off. ledge, Bob. Well, I didn't want to overreact to either the trouncing of Miami or the loss to the Lakers, but it bothered me. I was, you know, as you know, I was away. And, and I heard about the, in the morning of the game last Thursday, uh, I heard out there in Brookings, South Dakota, that neither neither uh, LeBron nor AD would play. And I said to Coach Eric Henderson, uh, they're in trouble. I, 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 they're in trouble. I don't like this. The Celtics, I, I, don't, I, I, I fear this game now much more than I would have. But they, when just we saw what happened. they just got better in their 39 and 12, which brings us to Porzingis. Uh, did I, is this right? Did I see, did, am I seeing things? Did he actually lead the Celtics in scoring in the win over the Atlanta Hawks? Jeff? 31. He, yeah. He was great. He was, great. He was terrific. And, and, he, and again, that is the beauty of Porzingis in this team. That is the beauty of the team. One guy has an off night and you've got four other dudes 
really who could step up. Like, well, the box score was, it's a beautiful balanced box score. Look at it. I love, you know, I'm a box score freak. I love box score. And, and it's, it's a thing of, of basketball beauty, their box score today. I can tell you that. I, I love box scores like that. Um, uh, he's, he's, he continues to impress. And I continue to laugh at myself, uh, my, uh, my absolute ignorant skepticism about the trade. You know, if you go back and dig up what I was saying, oh my God! But I'm fess- I'm I'm owning it. I I blew it. I was you didn't blow yeah. it. No, no, you didn't blow it. You just didn't know because he was stuck in purgatory in Washington. Well, like I, I said, so I said at the time, nobody watches the Wizards. I I didn't. I had no idea what kind of year he was having. I saw the numbers after they traded for him. You know, I called. You know who I called after the trade was I called uh, former now former Wizards. GM Tommy Shepard, and he's mm-hmm. the one who who kind of set me straight. And he was like, "No, no, no. Porzingis has was awesome for us, awesome. You know, he's matured a ton uh, over the years. He's not just a guy who wants to pick and pop. He can he can go in there, a great passer now. So mm-hmm. he was the one who kind of you know got me straight right away, Bob. And and he's been better than advertised, better than Shepard oh. even told me. He By was the way. Be. Um, like, you know, because now he's an adult. Like now, I I think that's the other part of the Celtics team that you looked at a few years ago, and you're like, all right, Tatum and Jalen Brown, they have no leadership qualities. They're too young. This, that, and the other. They've grown up now in these last couple of years. They're not kids anymore. They're not kids. And then you surround them with Horford, Drew <laughs> Holiday, obviously Derek White. And Porzingis has grown up as well. And you're like, and Hauser comes out of college. Like he's he's a grown man in terms of who he is. Pritchard, they just, there's not many leaks when it comes to like character or ego or any of that now in this locker room. Like that's the beauty of Joe Missoula and what you're dealing with. I understand why he didn't need anything else. By the way, the more I see a Pritchard, who I've liked from day one and liked him at, 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 in college, the more I like him. And and he, he had that nice little shovel pass from everyone on the baseline last night. He can do great he, backup. He, he gets he gets sneaky yeah. offensive and or defensive rebounds. He makes sneaky steals. He's he, he's a, he's aggressive. And then of course you know he's Rajon Detro on this earth is making those threes. I mean I I love having him around. And you know starting to remind me of in terms of the. The, the nature of the um, role, the, just the nature of the, the the proportionate role that he plays. Can I guess? Not, can not I guess? that they have can I that guess? similar skill. Larry Siegfried, I'm going back 50 years. He's he's the 20th you first. Get, hey, Larry Carrie, Siegfried. you were not going to guess Larry Siegfried. I was going to say Jerry Seesting. Right. That's good. But no, but Seesting wasn't anywhere near as tough as – he was tough, but people think. But he wasn't as resourceful. His thing was, of course, not missing 15 – foot jump shots i mean he was the you know that he shot 65 percent from the floor in the last 17 games at 85 86 season wow. think about that 65 percent and we how know many were, how many hey how 65. many were contested zero uh, well inside out passes from from every you know from max or from yeah. from larry or oh you know but and and 90 percent of the 65 percent were 15 foot 17 foot jumpers wide open. it's a good comparison though i like that those three i can see those three in a in the, in the Celtic uh, lore, you know, uh, yeah. anyway. Well, to your point about the lack of ego, you have two all-stars in Jalen Brown and in Tatum, and nobody else cares. Nobody else on the team cares. Porzingis doesn't care. Holiday doesn't We know care. the guards don't care. <clears throat> they, they, they don't well, care. They're like, think about have it. a good time, guys. Porzingis was in Washington. So he's just happy to be somewhere that he's playing meaningful games. Right. Derek yeah. White right now could be in San Antonio. Right. Right? He could be in San Antonio. And, and yeah, like, I think with Tatum and Jalen Brown getting paid, I think it's different once you're Jalen Brown and you get that contract. Now, there's something to be said about living up to it. We've talked about that for a while. Yeah. But you can exhale and say, like, I just got the best contract in, in NBA history. Like, I'm good. I'm good now. I I want to say something about the game last night. And because yeah. I'm always trying on the lookout to defend the, the, the sanctity of the regular season. So people don't I know. So I know somebody. I know. Celtics beating the Hawks. So when people beat the, the Hawks, Hawks in a game that was 
well contested from start to finish. The Celtics didn't really pull away until the last couple of minutes to put the game up. In fact, they still they needed they needed that that three pointer from Krasingas to put the thing to rest. Okay, it was a I'm applauding the Hawks missing two starters yep. for coming into Boston and and going head to head with them and making them work. Really, really, really making the Celtics work to win that game. They they deserve credit for what they did last night. The the, the Hawks did. I know somebody who went to the game. It was his debut as a as a, a great Boston sports fan from Connecticut. Uh, and loves the Red Sox. I think. And but this is his Celtic debut. He was all excited. Went with his friend. And they, just think the smile on their face when they walk out of that building last night. They got a show. They got an NBA show. And that's and that happened. And probably were two or three others last night in other buildings where people walked out. And, and said, damn it, that was good. I just hate it when people put down the regular season. I mean, there's a reason for it. You got to play those games. You don't just go on paper and, 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 and set up the playoffs. So uh, people got their money's worth. I know we enjoyed the hell out of watching it at home. And, and I was thinking about my friend and I, and I was texting with him and saying, you know, you, you, you picked a good one for your debut. So anyway. Got his money's worth. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate. From FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets. Which players will score a touchdown? How many points will be scored? And so much more. New customers join today and you get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Boston to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Uh, Jeff, you want to talk about Embiid for Philadelphia? He's out for four weeks with knee surgery. At the time, he was averaging wilt-like numbers, 35 points per game, 11.3 rebounds, 1.8 blocks. Uh, and But because he's not involved in 70% of the game, the stats don't matter anymore. You know, that's maybe a side note, but you wanted yeah. to comment on that. Well, just again, they're saying they're going to reevaluate in a month, but you know, thing I've always worried about with Joel, you know, since he came in the league was what health, right? I mean, health and and knocking what he had been pretty good for a while. He had really been pretty good for a few years now, no. but you just worried about his body from the moment really um, that that he left Kansas and 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 went to the NBA draft and and has had kind of a myriad of 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 issues with his body. Um, obviously Philly, you can kind of stick a fork in them without Embiid. And now what does this mean for the future of, of Embiid in the organization? You know, because again, like you, you just wonder how long it's going to be before Embiid when he does get healthy. And I'm not sure, like, you know, again, is he going to come back this year? We'll see if I'm Joel Embiid, I'm not rushing back. I'm not rushing back. So, what does this mean for for him and the Sixers long term? They were playing well without him, um, but they need another piece. Even even oh, with yeah. Maxi playing out of his mind, yeah, they needed one more piece to me to be legitimate challengers to whether it's Boston or Milwaukee in the East. And uh, yeah, I just feel bad because I love Joel. I wish he would stay, you know, be healthy because I, I think he's kind of. I mean, again, he and he and Jokic are are just they're 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 two guys that you love to watch because they're so different as bigs in, in this day and age. I, where, where, you know, I looked him up yesterday for a reason and and forgot he missed his first two seasons. Two, not two, just his open. He two. he missed his first two seasons yeah. after yeah. leaving Kansas because he re injured himself during rehab. On on his uh uh what was the thing uh, his, oh his, uh, oh oh his foot navicular bone navicular foot I think he had a back at one point back problems at he he's had a bunch of things but the reason he, but he but he had injured himself with, but he had broken his navicular bone which which I'm told is the worst thing you want to do and of course ask Bill Walton he will tell you so anyway um that game he played guys I the game last year remember he had that fifty two point game. Uh, in which uh, against Boston and and I said it was the easiest, beautiful, most just dazzling 
perfectly smooth and beautiful game. He has a beautiful game. He really does. And yes. and I I don't know him as Jeff does, and I wish him the best though because you know he deserves a career. Uh, he's he's he, he's made himself into something coming out of Cameroon, folks. That's oh. the honest thing. well, yeah. I mean, listen, even out of Kansas, we remembered he had the injury label, and it hasn't oh, changed, and, fortunately. But, oh, and by the way, one more yeah. thing. One, one more thing. Uh, I was counting on him being an Olympian, but it doesn't look like it's going to be any chance of well, that. That's the other part. That's the other part. I mean, he's 29, guys. You know, the question is, is Joel Embiid going to play beyond like 33, 34 with this body? I don't know. I think he's probably got four or five more years uh, left in him at, at, at a high level. And to me, if I'm Joel Embiid, I want to go somewhere where I have a chance to win a title. Well, hopefully the Sixers get that third piece because then they can be in contention. Because when you look at the Eastern Conference right now, uh, look out, here come the Cavaliers. And it seems like the Celtics are the short bet right right now. Milwaukee, they had to change coaches. The Knicks are, we all know what the Knicks are. But now Cleveland is in second place in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. And they've won seven in a row. So how big of a threat are the Cavaliers, Jeff Goodwin? Well, I mean, we knew they were going to be good. I still don't think anybody's like taking them as a actual threat to beat the Celtics or Milwaukee, but you know, they got Darius Garland back, yeah. you know, their point guard, you throw him They're They're a well-constructed team by Kobe Altman and Mike Gansey. And, and, and I say that because, you know, again, you've got uh, Donovan Mitchell is your star, but you need help for him. He's got a point guard in Darius Garland who, who just loves to distribute the ball. You've got a shooter in Max Struess around them, which fits, right? Like, that's what he does. Yes. Then you've got Mobley and Jared Allen up front. Uh, Mobley's one of the best, honestly, young forwards in the game. I mean, in terms of versatility. And, and these guys have high character. And then I love their bench. I do. Like, George Niang, our guy, coming off the bench. Karis Levert coming off the bench. He was yeah. a star before he had injuries kind of derail his career, uh, Dean Wade, like they've just, I love how they've, they've like Kobe Altman and Mike Antti deserve a ton of credit. Cause this organization looked to be absolutely dead and buried a few years ago. Um, and, and, and they've, they've drafted well, they've made some really good trades. Um, so I, again, I think they're, they're probably a, if they could get to the Eastern Conference Finals, that would be a hell of a year. I think they're probably an Eastern Conference semifinals type of team. I don't see them as a true threat to beat the Bucs or the Celtics. Donovan Mitchell is on a major roll, so people should know. Um, in his last five games, 40, 29, 31, 25, and 45 last night, he's shooting in, those, in that stretch 55% from the floor. He's led the team in scoring 12 of the last 13 games. And the 13th was our buddy, George Niang, who had 33 and a loss to the Bucks. <laughs> but uh, Mitchell, uh, yeah, yeah, everything you said, I, I now that should be taken seriously. And, and let's salute the coach too, J.B. Bickerstaff. Yeah. And, um, you know, who's, I knew dad back in the day, who was a wonderful guy. Loved, I loved Bernie. Bernie's still involved in the organization, I'm told. And I, I, I'm glad to know. And uh, that's nice. And Cleveland, you know, they, they were, they went through such a, 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 a painful, romantic, athletic relationship with, with you-know-who, you know. I mean, you know, LeBron, and, I mean, and, and, and he left them in the lurch, you know, again. And um, I, I think they deserve, their fans deserve something good. So that's okay with me. Hey, Gary, Gary, we have yet to talk to Bob. Um, I haven't. I don't know if you have yet about Doc Rivers' return. To, to, <laughs> oh, we did. Yeah, court. we did. But go ahead. I mean, you got, yeah, sure. Let's get, go ahead. Ask well, I, I just got. wonder how this is going to work. So far, so bad. It has not been good. And we all love Doc. We all love Doc. But Bob, take, try to be objective on this one. Yeah. Okay. Try. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard for you with, with Doc. I get it. It's like, you know, your your long lost brother with with Doc Rivers, but um, <laughs> was this the right move? Like, was this the right move to bring in a guy who's been uh, in the booth for the last or, or or on the court TV wise for this season, 
who's had their struggles in the playoffs, and again, I love Doc as much as you do, was this the right move to bring him into Milwaukee right now? You mean I can't recuse myself? You right. cannot. No, you cannot. all right. I don't like it. Uh, I wish he hadn't done it. And and uh, I, I uh, it just, you know, I don't want people having further excuse to examine the Clippers' failures, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> I don't want that, but that it's going to be thrown in his face if they don't, if they, if something bad happens. And, and, uh, um, and there's something, maybe there's something funny. I don't know. I mean, Giannis is, is he a two time coach killer? Is that, is it, is that, is I'm asking. It would be shocking if, yeah, like, I gotta, I gotta say this. You know, I'd heard some stuff about Adrian Griffin, um, <laughs> that it just wasn't working there. I, I just, I feel like it would be very difficult to point any blame on Giannis because I've right, never I, heard just, a bad word about I'm, Giannis. I'm posing ever. the question, which probably isn't fair at all, but it, but it's out there, and I'm just posing it. I don't know. I don't want to believe that either. I want to like Giannis, and I love his game, and and everybody loves yeah. Doc, right? Everybody pretty much loves Doc. So yeah. like, Doc and Giannis should be the right marriage. I think it's just going to take time. But like you said, the problem is all you're doing now, if you're Doc, like you've already won a championship. All you're doing is putting yourself in a situation now where, like, if something else bad happens in the playoffs and you're up, like, 3-1 in a series and you lose, it's like, no, Doc, why did you do this? Why? I just – I'm su- kind of surprised. I, I, I mean, he's – this is a hey, life move. Hey, you see how much money? Did you see how much money they gave him? No. Why are you Why are you surprised? Yeah, I know. That's – right, right. But no, still, you don't think he hasn't – you know, I think that – the bank account should be in good shape anyway, but yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed. I, I like, you know, I, I just was happy for him. I think he was in a good place. I think he liked, I, I know he liked uh, Mike Breen. I know he liked, he told me he liked Doris and, and, yeah, and Doris, with her they're and, the best. And, all right. And the other thing is in terms of how much time it's going to take, all we know, just get in it as the bar of praise from Bill Purcells, get in the tournament, just get in. Yeah. And, and once you're in, you know, you, you, well, it, it, so he's got enough time to, to to sort things out. Well, my my response to Giannis would be, and I, I'm a doc apologist as well. I think the Clippers, with ownership, that was a tough situation. He had to deal with Harden in Philadelphia. That is not the same Harden now that's in Los Angeles. And, you know, I would say to the Greek freak that if you can't, Giannis, if you can't play for doc, you can't play for anybody. So to me, this is on the player. No, right. Well, right. So we'll keep it worth keeping an eye on. I mean, obviously, it's worth keeping an eye on. We have to keep an eye on because it's directly, you know, involves the Boston Celtics. There's no question. Uh, yeah. Guys, on a, on a on a somber note, I mean, they're going to celebrate the life of Kobe Bryant. They're going to unveil the statue outside the arena. That is actually going to happen today on the day of the taping. This, I don't know if this brings back any thoughts or uh any feelings at all bob about this i mean certainly i'm glad well, that memory is not going to be forgotten when when kobe passed uh the the enormous outpouring of of grief and 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 uh, you know love for him from from so many circles so many areas it, it, it i wasn't re- ready for that i didn't realize he was that beloved i had underestimated the 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 uh the mamba pull you know um, so, you know, it's, um, and, and the way he died was, you know, with the, his daughter, oh, you, know, but, you know, it's just awful. Um, so it, it's, it, it's always point, it's poignant. There's no question, but I mean, he, he is a, a revered figure in LA and, 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 but, and elsewhere too. And uh, a lot of players uh, grew up, you know, looking Pat and wanted to be the next Kobe Bryant. So good, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moved by, I'm, just reminded that the, the shocking news we got of how you know how he died was 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 really one of those awful stories, no question. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think what is he like the fifth or sixth person to have a statue outside of of crypto or whatever yeah. it's called now. Whatever crypto.com, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I just yeah. call it the Staples well, Center still. Yeah. Uh, it just sucks. Out. It sucks that he's not here to yeah, you know, to to be there, to enjoy it, to appreciate it. It's just, it's still weird. It's still weird. I mean, it's again, very it's weird. So it's young, very it's weird. Like, it is. And, and so young and so, so involved. 
you know, because of his daughter, he was so involved in in, in uh, women's basketball. Yeah, who knows, yeah. Who knows he would have loved this. Who knows where he would have taken that that right. that interest? He could have taken that interest to somewhere to the, really help the WNBA and and help that women's basketball everywhere. Although it, it, it certainly is the growth sport, it's the growth stock right now, women's basketball. So that's another hey, story, Bob. Yeah. Bob, what other what other all time great can you remember? Um, there are, there have been a few, but that that died as as young as I'm trying Kobe. To, yeah well i mean i'm trying to think of, of, of I, was, I knew i was just kind of running it through my head uh and and you know we had back in well ken hubs died after the year after we won the uh national league rookie of the year uh back in circa, circa 1961 or two uh, i know i'm forgetting something obvious uh, uh i have to be forgetting something obvious um and i'm sorry pete, I'm, it'll come to me pete one, died one. young pardon me Pistol Pete died young. Oh he? yeah, well I'm talking about doing the active. Oh yeah, Pete was in you know, he had retired. Oh, I was I'm saying young. Oh young. yeah, he was only 40, I think. Right. Barely turned he was 40. Playing pick up hoop, wasn't he? Yeah, only turned 40. He had a congenital heart defect that we didn't know about. Um as it turns out. Yeah, Pistol Pete was a shocker Rude, that's for sure. Uh and I'm sure I'm going to think of a answer that you get after after we're done. Yeah. But uh you know, um, I'm just trying to think of oh, well yeah. Great yeah, basketball right. players, you know, like, you know, or any sport. I'm thinking about. I'm just yeah. I was just thinking more basketball. Who died? Well, the, the greatest basketball tragedy of uh, inactive remains during an active career. Of Maurice Stokes. That 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 situation when Maurice Stokes was stricken with with I believe encephalitis, but he was stricken with a sleeping sickness, or and 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 uh, you know, and then he lasted and lingered. You know, he'd be able to live a life of another however many years thanks to jack um, for large measure thanks to jack twyman taking him in that's the story you know became a movie and 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 uh it was a tr all true story what jack twyman did to become his legal guardian and uh maurice stokes people don't know was he was probably uh, uh lebron before lebron or, or, or elgin really? before elgin. he was a very versatile six six forward uh who uh came out of uh, saint francis loretto and was playing with the Royals and was a, 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 an all-star right away and was on his way to a great career when he was suddenly stricken, uh, you know, he collapsed and, 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 and now of course then, so anyway, Maurice Stokes would be the NBA standard of, 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 of uh, somebody in their, pro, in their career uh, during the height of, you know, of their fame. So that's, All right, that's guys. Nice. Well, always a pleasure. Thank you very, very much for those thoughts. We'll talk to you again next week. Now, are we going to, are we gonna no? We get. I need Super Bowl picks, right? No, oh. I, I'm not gonna talk uh, to you guys again. I don't believe before. No, no, we won't be talking it before the, again. Uh, uh, we might, uh, we might not, but let's 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 do it again. What do you got, Bob? I'm just want to say I'm gonna have to subscribe to a new uh, theory. It's foolish to pick against Patrick Mahomes, and I'm not gonna pick it. I have to say Kansas City, uh, Mahomes. Now I know he has had he hasn't been dazzling in his previous Super Bowl, uh, not all. Uh, but I think he's ready to put on a show. So not so. And and I'm and I I hope it's a great game. And I, I love McCaffrey, by the way. And I, I have nothing against the 49ers. I got I got no emotional stake in this game. Uh, emotionally, I'm, uh, it's intellectual stake and academic stake. And I'm going to say um, Kansas City and Mahomes will have a good game. Yeah, and Gary, I say it's foolish to go against Taylor Swift. So <laughs> I'm, I'm also going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs, but. For a very different reason, I, I think <laughs> Kelsey's going to have a big game. Um, they're playing; they're playing great football when it matters most. And yeah, agreed. Uh, I just don't know if Brock Purdy, like, love the kid, love him, but like, I don't know if he's ready for this moment this quickly. Okay. Uh, I know this is blasphemous, but I just see a lot of Brady uh, in the Kansas City quarterback. Well, I you just, know, it's not blasphemous. Well, he's great with England, you can't say that, but I see a lot of Brady's confidence. Look, Mahomes is Mahomes has more tools than Tom did. I mean, that's no argument. Yeah. But when you talk about the persona, the ability to lead, being on the field, the big yeah. moment, I see a lot of Brady and Mahomes, and that's I, why I, I don't think you can bet against them. I think it's a valid comparison. It's a, that I, I, of the hey, I have one final thing before you guys before we we wrap this. It's a football, another football question. Uh, my question to both of you is, does Bill Belichick ever coach again? I no. say no. 
He's not going to coach catch Shula, and it's going to drive him crazy when Andy Reid does. But no. Uh, no. I, I'd be surprised. I don't think so. Nobody hires him. No. Nobody hires him. No. I cannot believe that he would want to go anywhere where he doesn't have the final say, and 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 it's not. But does anyone? He he wants to break the record. Yeah, so he to does. Me, he would come back for any NFL job, would he not, Gary? I think that he should have taken any opportunity at this point in time and just coached and not worried about, as Parcells would say, pick the groceries, because he wasn't very good at that. He should have just coached, then he had a shot at Shula's record. What happens now with Bill, I think, is that he's been exposed, and some of these young coaches are coming out with different philosophies. They're very offensive-minded. They can pick wide receivers. They don't care about special teams, and they're really forward-thinking coaches. And right now, Bill has the reputation of not being a forward-thinking coach. And he, not which, an adapter. He's not an adapter. He's not an adapter. Now, in 07, he did it when Moss had 50, you know, Brady had 50 touchdowns, and they were that lighting was 15 it 15 years ago. That's the point. And, right. you know, or was that Josh McDaniels? I mean, I don't know. And, or was that Brady? But he, if he, if Bill Belichick was going to prove himself, he had to do it this year, and he had to just take the job and coach. But I think people look at Bill. Look, he's one of the greatest coaches of all time in any sport. I think people look at Bill as a fossil. Well, kind of, you know, again, what Bill should do is team up with Nick Saban on ESPN, do a podcast together. Great. And uh, and and you know, neither one of them are, are the most media friendly. Uh, 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 on the planet, but they, I think they would actually be fun together. If somebody had that, let them, let them enjoy life at this point, Bill, you've done it kind of like Saban's done it. Just close the chapter, go out the right way. It's, it's actually too bad. He didn't go out the right way and retire Agreed. instead of being forced out. That's the shitty. And I don't, I'm, I don't like Bill Belichick. I will say this because well, yeah, having yeah. a, having to go through enough of those press conferences, I'm not a fan of how he treated the media and people, but what I will say is it's just too bad. They didn't have the foresight to see what was coming and say, Hey, you know what? He's going to retire instead of being forced out. Agreed. On that note. Yes, Bob. Final thought. No, I said, I'm done. I'm done. He's got it. All right. We've been brought to you by FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate for FanDuel America's number one sports book. Super Bowl Sunday. Score the best seats on the couch, grab your favorite football snack, and play some super bets. So check out FanDuel. Guys, until next time. <laughs>